Alright, today's video is on making an enclosure for the Grizzly G0463 milling machine, very similar to the Sieg X3. Um, long story short, chips fly everywhere when you're using these little machines, and you track them into your house, and it's kind of a hassle. So hopefully you enjoy this, hopefully it's useful, and uh, I'll talk through as much of my thought process as possible. It might get annoying, but you see these chips flying everywhere? I want to prevent those from making it to my house. Here's a quick sketch of what I was thinking. Um, I'll talk over it really quick. Um, my idea was to use some thin uh, aluminum of some sort. And uh, what I'll do is maybe create a similar shape as like a Tormach uh, CNC enclosure. And then um, actually have welded joints. I have a spool gun so I can do some basic welding with these as long as that material is thick enough. And then I'll use like a polycarbonate um, here um, so I can see through it. I could use glass as I work at a glass shop but I think that um, the uh, plastic some of some form whether it was a polycarbonate or an acrylic uh, would be best. Um, I'll say this the reason I'm um, thinking polycarbonate um, not only is it stronger um, but it is easier to machine and drill so polycarbonate you can cut that with a saw very easily you can drill through it easily. It's soft and um, it's easy to tool and machine. So that's why I want to use polycarbonate versus um, using the acrylic. Um, and polycarbonate is the actual name for what people refer to as Lexan. Lexan is kind of like the brand name and um, polycarbonate is uh, the material Lexan um, uses. So um, just to give you an insight on that, but again, um, if you buy acrylic, which is also known as plexiglass, plexiglass is brittle and it cracks and uh, it's not that great to work with. But there are positives to acrylic, I should uh, mention. Um, acrylic you could wipe down without scratching it easier because acrylic is much harder, um, but some of uh, that might, you know, hurt you more than it'll help you um, trying to do any machining for it. Um, now if I can successfully create this whole thing without having to drill any holes in it then I might do acrylic because I do like the properties that it has of being harder um, and that will be better for cleaning um, but for now I'm leaning towards polycarbonate just so I can have something that I can actually drill holes through for hinges or magnets or whatever I'm gonna do for the door portion there. Here's a few photos of progress on uh, drawing this on Fusion 360, which if you haven't downloaded it and you use a Mac, you should definitely do that. It's free for hobbyists and it's awesome. Really enjoy that. So um, download that thing now. So, again, why do I want an enclosure? So this is my laptop sitting on the back of a scooter, sitting on its stand with a piece of OSB blocking the keys. So hopefully chips don't get into that too bad. And then here's the stand which I moved away from the wall because um, I wanted to be able to walk around it a little bit. And uh, this thing's just killing the ground with chips and everything is covered in them. So that's why uh, an enclosure would be great here. So what I'm gonna do really quick is figure out the extremes of this machine and uh, how far I'm gonna need to have the table um, to each side and also uh, the depth. So I'm going to start by taking these guys. I'm going to do another quick front sketch. What I'm going to do is basically just um, raise the head up to where it's not going to hit anything or the spindle. I'm going to move it to its outer limits. Alright, so that's the limit to the side on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and then I'm going to add like two inches to them. So I guess what I'll do is measure from my chip tray for now uh, to there. That's four inches. You know what? I'm going to add an inch. I don't want to do too much in excess here. Um, yeah, I'll add 
I'm gonna add one inch. Okay, well I've got the caster installed on the bottom of this guy. I opted to have the swivel ones towards the uh, face or front of the machine there. So that's the, the door. And uh, I'm gonna flip this guy upside down, throw the machine maybe back on top now. Um, anyway, I think this is gonna be real nice. Should be um, easy to move around the shop. Well, uh, got an idea of mounting the laptop on the side of this guy. I've got this piece here. It's kind of like a pivoting mounting bracket for an old digital readout I never used. And uh, I've got this piece of about eighth inch steel here. This is overkill, but uh, might use that on the bottom of the laptop. And then there's a couple of ports here have something that releases here. I think these might be for like a Wi-Fi card or something. I don't know. I don't know anything about computers, but I know that there's a slot that'd make a pretty slick mounting spot just to have a, a little piece slide down in there. And then on the other side, there's the old three and a half inch floppy disk thing. And I could have another piece slip in there and then I'd have a uh, something to kind of just hold the laptop in place and that would probably work i've got those pieces of pretty thin walled steel i could add to that bracket to help it articulate a little bit more and maybe mount it on this side here and uh, have it be able to swing out for use well i figured i should record this just in case i drop it i better have proof of how dumb i am so uh what I've got going on here is the casters on this base. I took the ch chip tray off because I'm not going to reuse that for the enclosure I'm going to build. So uh, I'm going to attempt to transfer this to that. Um, it's slightly higher now, which is nice because before, in order to get it onto this stand, I had to pick the damn thing up and... Um, it's pretty handy. Pick this up by yourself. And I called the brother. He's busy. So I could have arranged to uh, pull the hoist and all that crap, but decided not to. Just to uh, do it like a dumb 30 year old person would. So let's see what happens. I do have the caster's locked. She doesn't need much. Um, I was kind of the garage door. I suppose if this was going to go down, this is about as good as a guy could do it. I'm not sure how much this machine weighs, but I swear it's got to be like 300 pounds. No return. On this enclosure, this is the original sketch I did in like 10 minutes or whatever um, at midnight when I thought of doing this. Um, anyway, long story short, I need to figure out 
how tall I'm going to make this thing so I can start ordering the materials. Uh, so the distance between the lower chip uh, tray and the top one. And I, I'm glad I came out here and rethought this because originally I was basically just going to make it enough height to pass the uh, draw bar. But if I would have done that, if I decided to do a power draw bar, which I definitely, I've got enough of these. I bought, I think, three of these air cylinders. So I can do power draw bars on however many machines I want. So I'm going to make provisions to make sure I can put this in there. So from the top of the machine to um, with this sitting on top, I've got about 43 and a half. I'm going to make this an even 48 inches uh, here and call that a day. And I should also make sure that I can roll out of this shop, otherwise I'll be screwing myself. So 48 inches above the base of the stand. And I can make sure that I can roll out of here by simply doing this. Oh, better disconnect this from the computer first. Now with this here, forty-eight, and I'm actually it's gonna be forty-eight inches plus three inches, so call it fifty-one. Better just double check that clearance. Whoo! Damn, that'd be too tight. Um, actually, might just barely fit. Might barely eke out of here. Fifty-one. All right, we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it. I'm gonna have to do 50 inches total. 50 inches to the upper limit. I gotta think about somebody else too that might buy this. I wanna make sure it can work in their application, fit in their garage, otherwise, it will suck for them. I bring that up because I'm gonna sell this thing. In fact, I've got it for sale right now, but just because I have it for sale doesn't mean I'm gonna stop improving it. Um, this is good practice for me, 50 inches. Okay, so that's that. So I'm gonna walk you through my progress so far on this. Um, I've created the drawings that I'm sending to the uh, fabrication company. I'm gonna have them make this enclosures, um, chip tray on the bottom and also the top. So uh, there's the actual drawing I sent them. And then I've never done this before, so um, it's taken me several hours to draw this, but I started making the actual model itself, which for me, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, this is a big step for me. I'm not very good with computers or anything, but I've got this dialed in pretty much where I want it. Um, so this is a rendering, um, the whole thing's basically created using sketch and then you extrude things to the size you want. So, um, I would say don't be intimidated, um, by this, just go in start drawing and try to figure it out. Uh, if I can do it, anybody can. So, uh, yeah, so far it's looking really good. This is going to be the front of the, uh, enclosure here and I'll give you a quick detail. Um, I was trying to think of how I'm going to prevent water from coming out of this and because uh, I, I want to have all these panels removable uh, 
And so what I've done is I, I have a quarter inch offset. I'm zooming in here. Uh, there's a quarter inch offset. So this is a quarter inch in from the edge of the chip tray and from the edge here over is a quarter of an inch as well. And um, my idea behind this is that I'll be able to tuck my whatever plexiglass or uh, polycarbonate, whatever I, I do end up going with in there and I'll be able to attach it with a couple of magnets. So the front door will be removal, removable with a magnet and it will fit within there. So when I go to weld or fasten this, depending on how I do it, um, I'll just make sure to give that little space there. That way the, the, the viewing glass or plastic um, can allow um, everything to run down and it doesn't come out the bottom um, of this if you decided to use a little more coolant. So anyway, this is a quick update. I'm going to probably throw this on YouTube tonight as part one and update you guys with progress as I put this thing together. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video today. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in these videos. That lets me know I should keep making more of them. Uh, perhaps this is really boring, but it's kind of intended for people that might not know where to start. And uh, the things I do in my shop are basically small improvements that uh, anybody should be able to do. And sometimes it's outside of my abilities to do efficiently, and I don't mind subcontracting some of that work. Like in this case, I'm going to be having someone do the sheet metal. That's fine. You know, um, sometimes you've got to let the shoemaker make the shoes. Um, I would like to get better with sheet metal, but for now, I want to get this enclosure done. So I'll do the welding and fabrication part. I'll have someone else do the sheet metal.